So hello and welcome to the computer lab. So in today's video, I'm going to be putting an SSD drive into this old Dell Inspiron 2310. Now it's currently got one of the older style drives in it, the standard sort of hard drive, the spinning hard drive. And I'm going to replace it with this 240 gig um, SSD Kingston drive. Now this basically came into my office, came from a customer who just wanted it cleaning down and wiping the old hard drive and then getting rid of. So I just don't want to see it go to landfill. So I thought it might be a nice cheap machine uh, if it runs okay when I've got the SSD drive into it. So in this video, I'm going to show you obviously opening the backup, taking out the old hard drive, putting in the new SSD. Then I'm going to show you how to install Windows 10 onto an older machine uh, and hopefully get this machine up and running. Now this machine only has four gigabytes of RAM. Again, it's upgradable. So I might, if I've got an old stick lying around in the office, I might upgrade it to eight gigabytes because that's sort of the minimum that I tell people these type of machines need now. Uh, it does have a, a CD drive, a DVD drive built in, and it's got plenty of ports on the back. So there's no reason why this uh, machine wouldn't do somebody and last somebody a couple of years. Uh, for the price I'm going to be asking for it. And just before we get going, obviously, if this video is helpful to you, please do subscribe to my channel. Hit me with any comments below. They are always truly appreciated. And smash the old like button if the video has been helpful. With all that being said, let's get on with the video. So we start off by flipping the Dell 2310 over onto its front. And with this particular machine, there are two screws on the underside of the back, one here and one there. Uh, we just need to release them. Incidentally, I will speed sections of this video up uh, just to try and keep the overall length of this video down. So yeah, we need to take the back cover off obviously to install the SSD. So it's gonna take these two screws out and we are gonna release the back cover. And to do that, you just push up onto sort of away from the screw holes like so, and it pops off. Obviously, if this is stood up, it's, it just comes off anyway. It's just because I've got it led flat. I just need to put something under it just to uh, prise it up as it will be. But it's not held on by anything. It's just slid under some catches. So I'm just going to put that out of the way like so. And we can move on to the actual hard drive. Now, this particular machine, the hard drive's on the right-hand side underneath the case in here. Um, and the RAM's on the left, which I will show you a bit later in the video. But we need to release the hard drive from... Uh, it's casing, which is this one on the right. So there's two screws, and they are spring-loaded screws, but they are retained actually on the case, so uh, they tend not to come out with this particular machine. So you can just release the two screws, and the whole lot sort of slides away. That is if you undo the screw properly and fully, which I have not done, so we'll just <laughs> check them again. And then it should just slide away from the tabs. And then the cable is tight, so you just need to wiggle the, uh, the SATA cables out and the power cable. And then this is the hard drive that's installed. So it's the sort of the old style. It's got four screws holding it. Uh, and we just need to take them out now to uh, release the drive from the actual casing. So again, just speed this section up. And there we have it. That's the old uh, spinning hard drive removed from the hard drive holder. So this particular drive is held on with these four screws, uh, as you saw me unscrew them there. Now with the SSD, there is a slightly different mounting holes. Uh, now they're all the same, the SSDs, or very similar at the very least. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm using this Kingston uh, SSD drive and it is a model A400 and it is a 240 gigabytes. Uh, now this is one of the slightly older ones, but it is still plenty fast enough for this older processor on this machine. So the issue with this, like I said, is four screws. These four screws, uh, they don't line up when you put the SSD drive into the original uh, hard drive holder that is on this Dell Inspiron 1. So you can put double-sided tape. I've seen them where I've opened these up before and working on custom machines and people have stuck SSDs on with double-sided tape. I've got no major issue with that. The only issue I have with that, if the machine does get warm, the tape tends to start to give up. So I like to use these um, brackets here. Uh, there's different ones you can get this particular style, but the brackets I had in the office didn't quite line up. So there's two holes at the side. And obviously they don't line up with the actual casing or original hard drive holder. So all I did was mark it up and drilled a couple of holes in it. So that would allow me then to screw the SSD onto my SSD mounting bracket. Um, which you would do anyway, like so. And then that gave me, because I drilled two holes in the actual casing, it gave me also a couple of screws I could use to firmly mount it in so I knew that even if I put double sided tape on I know the screws are holding it in case the tape got warm so there we have it I'm just checking the holes have lined up and you can see I've got two extra holes sorry about the out of focus camera it won't focus on my hand there but you see I've got two strips of double sided tape 
on the actual SSD mounting bracket and I've just taken the protective tape off and I'm just going to offer it up to the original hard drive holder and then just stick it into position like so and once I've got it in stuck in position I'm then just going to put the two screws into the uh, holes that I drilled earlier well one of the holes that I drilled earlier because the front one actually lined up and then I know then if the tape gets warm that it, the hard drive the SSD is not going to go anywhere and it's not going to rattle around in the case so like I said I've just got the two screws there and now I'm ready to mount this up back into the casing so again I'm just going to pop the power on and pop the SATA cable in like so and then slip the casing in make sure the cables are out of the way and then just screw my two screws back in and that's the SSD ready to go um, like I said at the beginning of the video there is some RAM on this particular model on the left hand side which you can swap out and it is under this left hand side cover which is just held on with one screw again it's self retaining but I'll take it out all the way and it just pops up and you can see the two um, sticks of RAM that are available to swap out here and these are if you're used to working in uh, machines or if you've seen RAM and the way it pops out on laptops it's the same on this two little clips either side and you just slot it out like so and then you can pop your new stick back in make sure it goes in correctly and then click it into position and then put the cover back on so if you're upgrading the RAM that's where the RAM is on this Dell Inspring 1 2310 and that just leaves me to pop the back cover back on and then pop the two screws on that hold the cover on. Now the next part of the process is to install Windows 10. This machine won't take Windows 11, so it has to be Windows 10. So you're going to need a USB stick. I'm just using uh, an 8 gigabyte stick uh, and you're going to need a Windows machine to download the installer. So pop in the uh, USB pen drive. Like I said, this is a SanDisk, uh, 8 gigabytes, this particular one. So the next part is to download the Windows 10 installer tool uh, so I will put the link to the website in the description box below uh, we just need to open a web browser I'm using Microsoft Edge and then we need to click the download tool now that will go into your downloads folder and then we can run this program we then get a prompt on the screen so now you sure you want to run it click on yes and then we we'll get a getting a few things ready box which you'll see in the center of the screen now now what this does it starts to download Part of the installer first not downloading any of the windows files yet it's just all to do with the installer uh, so it's not actually read the actual usb stick yet but again i will speed section this video up because this bit can take anything from 15 10 15 minutes to an hour depending on the speed of your machine so agree to the terms and conditions and then you'll get the next box again which is getting a few things ready again and at this point i'll just zoom in a bit so we can see what's going on because there's a few different parts of this process now uh, that not that you can't get wrong but you need to make sure are correct so we've got a couple of things here we can upgrade this pc we don't want to do that we want to create an installation media onto a usb flash drive click on the next button again if you was upgrading you'd use the upgrade one but we're not and then we've got this other one where user recommendations tick box we don't want to use recommendations uh, but as it happens it is exactly as it is so i'm downloading a 64 bit 64 bit machine and i'm doing windows 10 and i'm in the united kingdom click next again now here is the USB flash drive. It's already got the box ticked. I can do an ISO file if I want to do it, uh, install it from a CD or DVD. But like I said, I'm on USB, so just click on next again. And here is the um, drive or the USB thumb drive it is going to use to install the Windows 10 installer. If I've just put my a new pen in, I would click on the refresh device list so it recognizes it. So it's worth clicking that if you put it in after uh, you've started this process. Uh, so at this point it does erase the usb thumb drive so make sure that you get the right drive letter um, when you are at that stage so again this does take a while this process uh, depending on the speed of your machine and how quick your internet is and stuff like that and if you want to know how long it took me just look in the bottom right hand corner of the clock and it will show you once it has finished then just go into the pen drive in file explorer and check that it has written some files onto it it should look like you can see on the screen now and now we are ready to put this into the back of the machine that we're going to install Windows 10 onto. So I'm just going to plug in the power and then I've got my wireless USB keyboard and mouse. It's Microsoft mouse and keyboard, which is um, as a little receiver. And then this is my USB pen drive that has got my Windows 10 installer on. So again, I'm going to put that into a the two USB slots on the back of this machine. Flip it around and then we're going to switch the machine on. 
Now, depending on if you are doing this on a different machine to this, it will depend on which F key you push. Um, this particular Dell was uh, push F12 for the boot menu. So you want to bring the menu up, so make sure you're keeping your finger down on F12 when you're starting the machine up. It will then bring the boot menu up. And then you select what you want the machine to boot up to first. Now we want the machine to boot onto the USB or use the USB drive to boot the Windows installer so we can install it. So you can see there I've got USB storage device selected and it says SanDisk, which is my actual USB 8 gigabit stick. Make sure that is selected. And then I can just push enter or return on the keyboard and that will then tell the machine to look for files to boot from from that particular USB pen drive. Incidentally, I will put links um, to all the bits I've used in this video in the description box below. They will be affiliate links, which basically means I get a small kickback um, in profits if you purchase through that link and you shouldn't pay any more. And as you see on the screen, the next prompt that you get is your language, time and keyboard settings. So make sure they are correct for wherever you are installing this and then click on the next button. And then all we've got left to do now is the install now button, which you can see smack in the center there. So click on that and the machine will go away and start the process. The next part of this process is to input your license key for Windows 10. Now I already have a license key for this particular machine um, and I'm obviously not going to show you on the screen for obvious reasons, but you will need your license key. You might have one that's already tied to your Microsoft account or you might have a Windows 7 key that you can use um, to install Windows 10. Either way, put your key into the box, as you can see on the screen there. Once you've got your key entered, you can then move on to the next stage. And then we just need to agree to the terms and conditions by clicking the little radio box there and click on the next button again. And then we get the next option, which is where we can upgrade, which we're not obviously doing. We want to click on custom and then make sure your drive is listed, the SSD drive. You can see it there. It's a new one, so nothing on it. Click on the next button. You might need to, if it's an old SSD, you might need to format and wipe the drive. So you can delete the partitions and stuff like that in that particular area of the menu. Like I said, this is a brand new SSD. So all we need to do is um, make sure it's correct one and then click on the next. And then we are presented with this next menu. Now this might take, um, like I said earlier, anything from 10 minutes to anything up to half an hour, an hour. It doesn't usually take it that long with an SSD, to be honest. But once it's installed, uh, then it goes into this uh, boot menu, which it might do a few, a few different um, boots and cycling. It will come up with a prompt you see on the screen where it downloads files. It might restart and then go through the same process again. So don't worry about it if it is doing this particular thing. You can see it is doing it on the screen. Obviously I've speeded it up, but this can be over a longer process. So once you've got all that, you should finally get to the bit where Cortana does its talking, which you'll probably hear in a second if I just leave the volume on for the machine. Uh, but it will prompt uh, and start to talk to you. You can silence Cortana by pushing the little mic button in the bottom left-hand corner. I'll just turn it down again a bit while we're just explaining this bit. But yeah, this is the bit where we uh, tell Microsoft sort of advertising and stuff like that and how we want the machine to be set up. Now, because this machine is going out to another customer, I'm not going to be um, licensing it to my Microsoft account. So I'll just silence Cortana. But I'm not going to uh, Microsoft, um, sorry, link it to my Microsoft account. It is going to be a brand new machine. So obviously be aware when you start this process that you might need to link it to your account if you want to keep it. So I'm clicking United Kingdom because that's where I am. Um, click OK. And then we get the other prompts here. Like I said, this is where the bit where the Microsoft account asks you and all your advertising ID and if it can allow uh, Microsoft Windows 10 to track you and all the other bits and pieces that it does. And then goes away and uh, checks for updates and all the other things it needs to boot into Windows 10. But once you've got through this process, you then should finally get to your Windows 10 prompt screen, as you can see there. If you've already got it connected to your network, it will start to flag up different items that you have on the menu. Um, on your internal home network. So for example, it brought up a printer with mine. What I tend to do once I've got it at this stage, I will then click on to the settings menu and then just make sure that it is downloading updates. It does take it a while at this point because it, as long as it's connected to the internet, it will update all the programs installed and it should go around uh, the Microsoft update cycle a, a few times. So it's worth leaving it on and planning to leave it on while it does all its different updates. So that is it. That's uh, my full video on installing an SSD drive into a Dell Inspiron 1 2310. 
and then installing Windows 10 onto that SSD drive. I really hope this video was helpful. If it was, like I said at the beginning of the video, please do subscribe to my channel. Please hit the thumbs up and please do hit me with any comments below or any videos you'd like me to make. They are always appreciated, the comments. And thanks again for watching The Computer Lab on YouTube.